Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, DwyerBoxingNews.com, a free site. Let's talk about this trilogy fight, MMA. Conor McGregor, one of those reference points for a generation, versus Dustin Poirier. Think about this fight for a moment. The first fight ends on a left hand up top by Conor McGregor that drops Poirier, right? The punch didn't look like it was that hard, but it's the location where it landed, right behind Poirier's ear that destabilized Poirier. He hits the canvas. Can't continue. The second fight ends on a left hand. Now, let's be clear here. It's southpaw against southpaw. It ends on a left hand by Poirier. This one lands flush. McGregor, of course, tries to do the poker face thing where he tries to not look hurt, but, of course, he ends up on the canvas. Stopped. Now we have a situation where Poirier was offered a title fight. That wasn't enough. Instead, he's decided to fight this third fight against McGregor, a huge name in MMA. Let's talk about betting strategy, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let's get after it. The bet I'm recommending, right, on time, uh, stuff shows up outside my window here, but the bet I'm recommending is the under two and a half rounds at a minus 116. Again, the under two and a half rounds at a minus 116. I don't see this fight going the distance, the familiarity, the ability to strike, the power, the punches. And I want boxing fans to understand you have two punchers in this match. Right? The fact that both guys are prepared to trade. The fact that both guys have won off left hands, both southpaws, in the preceding match matches tells me that both guys are going to be going for the stoppage from the opening moments of this bout. Let me describe both guys. You know, when I talk about boxing here, I talk about what I call ring coverage. The guy who looks like he's too far away from you. Think Deontay Wilder. Think Thomas the Hitman Hearns. You see the guy, he looks like he's halfway across, I would say the ring, here we're gonna say the octagon. Right? He looks like he's too far away. And then he's able to drop the front foot, get leverage, throw the punch accurately, have it not only hurt you, but have it knock you down. Conor McGregor is one of the hardest punchers I have come across in boxing or MMA. This guy has power. This guy can hit you with power from distance. Right? His punches change things quickly. But what I want you to do if you're a puncher, throwing your dominant hand, throwing a straight left if you're a southpaw, is to think about your front leg. Now, I want boxing fans to so think about this. Imagine a guy, imagine Thomas the Hitman Hearns from the 1980s, right? Softening you up, getting ready to throw his right hand. He was a righty. And his opponent, having better feet than Hitman. Understand, MMA has a foot dynamic, right? Poirier has better feet than Conor McGregor. So as McGregor is trying to measure Poirier, 
Poirier is doing these kicks to McGregor's shin on McGregor's front leg. Right, folks? This fight is going to be crazy. Because as McGregor is going to be standing up, right? They're not going to get to the ground early, in my opinion. McGregor is going to be standing up. He's going to be measuring Poirier. McGregor knows he's a puncher. Poirier, who can punch? Right? Who can punch? Poirier is going to be trying to throw off McGregor's leverage by kicking his right shin. But understand the risk involved. As Poirier is kicking at McGregor's shin, this is the dynamic of the first two fights, McGregor's going to be thinking about pivoting, moving that front leg, and then throwing the straight left hand. Right? Poirier is the faster puncher. He has the hand speed advantage. If McGregor throws and misses, Poirier, with the foot speed, with the, dare I say, greater athleticism, could find McGregor defenseless, could either come at him with his own punches, and again, both of these guys are punchers, or could try to use McGregor's leverage against him to take him to the ground. Understand, it's dangerous for McGregor to end up on the ground away from the side of the octagon. He needs that side to use as leverage to get himself back up off the ground. Poirier, by contrast, is comfortable on the ground anywhere in the octagon. So what I want people to do is to go to my favorites folder here on YouTube. I have both fights. Neither of them, neither of them made it to the halfway point of the third round. Right? Neither of them. These guys hit too hard. They already know what they want to do. McGregor understands I can't go to the floor with this guy. Poirier understands I can't stand outside and allow myself to get hit with McGregor's straight left. Both guys know, and this is very important, that they can knock down the other man off punches because it's already happened in their prior two matches. So I'm expecting the third fight to start where the second fight ended. I'm expecting both guys to come out, McGregor, to try to end this in the first round, which, by the way, is what he did the first fight. Right? McGregor to stand outside because when the other guy has the better ground game, in MMA, you don't want to be that close to him. Right? He could knock you down then and have problems. Understand here, this entire match comes down to spacing, and you'll notice both guys are great at spacing, especially McGregor. Right? McGregor stands far away from you. It comes down to spacing and sequencing. What happens first? Does Poirier kick McGregor's right leg out of the way so that McGregor can't throw his left hand? Or does McGregor pivot his front foot in such a way and set up spacing in such a way that Poirier ends up reaching for McGregor's right leg with his kick can't quite get leverage and is open for 
a counter left hand from McGregor. Right? Since McGregor is all in on his punches. Right? This is not a jab type guy. He's all in on his punches. Understand, if he throws and doesn't land, he's going to be extremely vulnerable. For a guy who's faster handed than him, who can counter, who has the punch, and who has the better ground game. I don't know who wins this fight. Right? Psychologically, both guys know they can end it at any time. Both guys know the first two fights didn't make it to the third round. I'm astonished that in a trilogy fight, the casino would give you a minus 116, just slightly worse than even money odds, on the under two and a half rounds. I'll be the casino suckleberry. I don't know who wins this fight. It's that good, folks. It's that good. But I just don't see this fight making it to the second half. The bet I like is the under two and a half rounds at a minus 116. I'm expecting a stoppage before the midway point of the third round. But understand the risk involved, and it's substantial. Both of these guys are seasoned vets. There is a possibility. I don't think Ego will allow this. But there is a possibility that one of these guys thinks to themselves, man, I got stopped early in an earlier fight against this dude. Maybe I need to stay away. Maybe I need to work some clock. Maybe I shouldn't stand in front of this guy and dare him to trade. If this fight makes it past the midway point of the third round, you lose it all. Be aware of the risks, but just understand, Dustin Poirier got offered a title shot. The title did not mean more to him than beating Conor McGregor in this trilogy fight. I think this is a fight where both guys professionally want to be the champion of the other. You don't do that by running. You don't do that by wasting time off the clock. I'm expecting these guys to get at it early. I'll be surprised if both guys aren't trying to throw home run punches in the opening round. I like the under two and a half rounds at a minus 116. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Let me also point out too that because of the pandemic, Vegas is now just getting back in the saddle. It's just opening back up. It's my understanding that this fight is a sellout. You want to talk about a festive atmosphere. You want to talk about a situation where you're going to have a lot of sports enthusiasts, a lot of gamblers back with other sports enthusiasts and other gamblers after a cold lockdown pandemic situation. I believe the crowd is going to be hyped. I believe the fighters are going to be hyped. Keep in mind, Conor McGregor doesn't need the money, folks. That Mayweather money was huge. The money off his alcohol business is huge. This is a guy who could walk away from the sport. But just like Dustin Poirier needs to know that he won the trilogy against Conor McGregor. Conor McGregor needs to know, wealthy or not, that he was the better man in the trilogy over Dustin Poirier. This is one of those rare moment fights. 
where both guys, both guys, want this one bad because it's career defining. I'm expecting someone to get stopped before the midway point of the third round. That's how I see it. That's my take. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.